All right, so we're going to review this Flagstaff SE. This is a uh, 10 foot pop up camper, tent camper, if you want to call it that. It's got a bike rack on top, which we are going to utilize. And this is more of like an off road. It's got a lot of, a lot of clearance here. It sits very, very high. LP tank on front, doesn't have a battery connected at the moment that has all the uh, wiring for it also some sort of uh, Wi-Fi device here I'm not sure what this is uh, what that is exactly for but there's that as well and then there's also a solar connect for solar panels we'll take a look at that over here is the uh, connections for the solar panel and then if you come down I believe it's underneath I think somewhere down in here where these wires are, there's a uh, little plug you take out. I think they call that an Anderson plug. It's just a two plug. Um, I believe that's got something to do with the solar as well. I'm not 100% sure. But we're going to review this thing and see how it works. I can tell you pulling this with the uh, 1500 RAM, it was like pulling absolutely nothing. I was kind of surprised how easy this thing pulls. There's basically no wind drag, I suppose. So, and it has all the uh, normal amenities, your fridge and that type of thing. There's 30 amp hookup for power, which this doesn't have air conditioning, so I don't know why you need the 30 amp. It has a AC prep. Um, it's got a TV coax port here. Uh, this is for something I think to do with water. And then it's got, it says the fresh water drain is down there. These are vents, I think, for your furnace. I think this is for your city water connect. No, this is for non-pressure water. That's what that's for. So I think maybe that might be the fill the water tank probably. And then this is your city water connection. And this is another, I don't know if this is like maybe a flushing to flush out the tank. And this is the back, comes with a spare tire. It's got a smaller bumper on it. And it's got a roof vent as well with a fantastic Dometic fan, which is actually kind of noisy. There also is an awning on the front here. And I'm, I don't know if this stove connects, but it's got a rail for like an outdoor stove. Maybe you can connect it. It does have the, uh, the gas port in here for the propane your LP connect so I, I'm pretty sure you can probably take the uh, the stove from the inside and I think it probably must hook on this rail here that's what that's for you got power out here as well there's actually quite a few power outlets in this thing speaker for the radio system an antenna that does substandard job at best um, that's a terrible location for an antenna Grab handle here, step, and then this is the venting for your refrigerator. So once we get it to the campground here, we'll set it up. It's nice that it's got this bike rack on there. That works nice. And like I said, that could double as your solar panel rack. You load that up with solar panels and be off grid for probably ever. Who knows? So this model has these extreme off-road lug tires. I, I don't know if this is more for just show or what. I don't know why you'd need a lug tire on a trailer. Don't get me wrong, like this thing looks cool. Like going down the road, it looks super cool. But I don't know exactly why you need a lug tire on your trailer. Maybe there's a reason, I just don't know. And like I said, there's a ton of ground clearance. This thing sits really, really high. And that's a, a Dexter 3500 pound axle. Um, I'm not sure about the braking system because it's not working right on this trailer. It does have a, a breakaway and a seven-way plug, but for some reason the brakes don't work on anything. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. It seems kind of odd. Uh, the guy at the dealership told me that uh, the only brakes that are supposed to work are the breakaway switch, which seems odd that it would have a seven-way plug with a breakaway. Why wouldn't it have brakes then? 
So they also told me it was coming with a, a four-way plug like this, a four, well, you can't really see that, but this is the, clearly the round seven-way connector. So I, I'm not quite sure, maybe something's not quite wired right. And like I said, it doesn't have a battery. So I don't know how the breakaway system for the trailer brakes would work without a battery because everything we have at work that has a breakaway system on or breakaway switch, they all have their own battery. So I'm not quite sure how that works, but like I said, we'll take a look at it at the campground. All right, so we'll go through a couple things here now that I got it set up. Um, well, first of all, where the the outside door panel goes when the thing is collapsed, uh, whatever is supposed to hold that up, there's like a little string that's broke off. Um, otherwise, it seemed like it's not too bad. The uh, That bike rack on top, that is very questionable at best. The bikes were kind of racking. I was real careful driving. Um, I also put a bungee around all of them just to help ensure that we don't have uh, any accidents with the bike falling off. And let's see, other than that, it's pretty simple to set up. There wasn't much to it. It's got the stabilizer jacks, kind of like level it out or whatever. And other than that, I mean, it goes together pretty, pretty simple. There isn't too much to taking it apart. Um, on these pieces here that come up, there's actually a piece you pop in. It's like a support brace. So this piece here, it's just like a channel. You pop that in to kind of, it's like a safety, I guess the guy said, in case the cable snaps off, the whole thing would collapse, so. Um, the one thing I had to do was I had to get a different ball hitch So that's a, a two inch drop that I flipped around so it's actually got from what I had was a two inch drop This is two and three quarter inch taller now To make this sit level just because this thing sits so high off the ground um, I like the fact that the clearance I'm not so So sold on the inside the insides kind of cheap, but maybe that's just the way uh, pop-ups are so this is where you store the door, and like I said, there's supposed to be like a strap that holds this up, but it's broke, so I just got it hanging there for now. So we're camping without any power or water or anything like that. So, and when the truck is plugged in, you can turn on some of the lights, or it was some of the stuff was lit up, and the radio would work, so... I don't know how that wiring works and like I said the brakes on here there was there's absolutely no brakes no break away so something on that is kind of hokey and I don't know maybe that's just the way campers are the wiring underneath just looks like a mess it doesn't look real good and the wires are real loose nothing's tied down so we'll take a quick look inside all right so we got a huge mess in here already but I'll just show you kind of the inside how everything is so it's actually pretty spacious it's it's a 10 foot so it seems like there's a decent amount of space I believe this is a full-size bed in the back here pull out it's got a uh, fantastic fan I'm not real sold on that either it was pretty loud when I had it on when I had it plugged in at the, the house uh, this end here I believe is a queen size for a 10 footer and then there's, well these are your rods that push out the tent sides or whatever to hold up the rough. There's a few adjustments there, and then there's push button LED lights, so which would be plenty bright for in here. So to take the thing all apart, the dinette here you have to break the table apart, and then this that table platform goes in between the cushions and the cushions lay flat so that you can slide this bed forward. And then over on this side here, we got your sink, and we got all our stuff set on top of the LP stove. You can see there's like a hinge bracket here, so this whole top part lifts up and sets down to get flat. So, and you can see here too, I don't, like I said, I'm not sure how old this camper is. It's not too old. This piece here is popped out. Um, 
Everything on the sink is plastic. Even though it doesn't look like it is, it, it's plastic. We don't plan on using that either. And then coming around, you got the uh, small little LP furnace here on the bottom. The thermostat is behind me. I didn't show you that. This down here is like your fuse box. This right in here, if you pop this open. So, and I don't believe that there's an inverter in here. It says that there's not, but there's a fan, so that maybe maybe you can get it with an inverter. This one just doesn't have one. But you got your breakers for your 110 and then your fuses for your 12 volt. Like I said, there's a lot of outlets. It's a, I believe a carbon monoxide or gas detector, water pump, switch, charging ports for USB. And then like I said, it's wired for solar on the top, so it's got your, I don't know if this is considered the, the charge controller button or whatever, but speaker over on this side, another outlet, there's a TV port, I don't know where the antenna is unless it's the same antenna they use for the uh, radio, which isn't much of anything. And then you got a small uh, Dometic refrigerator, I believe it's... Uh, LP and electric and then coming in where the door is there's a switch for like a LED light bar above the awning and I don't know what the other switch does it does say it has a Wi-Fi uh, range extender I guess I don't know and then this is like the the radio here so the radio gets actually pretty loud and there's all sorts of different connections for that. So I'm assuming that this little area here would be where you'd set a TV then. Because directly behind us is where you got the, uh, the couch, which also gets turned into a bed. So and there's supposed to be storage underneath here, but again, the hinge system on this just does not work right. You, you can only lift it up so far, which makes no sense, and when you try to flatten it out, and then set it back up it just I think somebody got frustrated with it and maybe tweaked it and now it's bent and because it's a rental nobody ever finds out about it so the the worst part of the design of this thing is the door so that's where the door gets strapped to it, strapped to when you're storing it and then these channels here is what brings the door down so channel it like this and then the door comes down there's some velcro and some little plastic tabs it just holds that frame in and then you got like a, a screen screens all the way down you can kind of half panel depending on how you want it so don't get me wrong this is definitely much better than a, a tent you got a lot more space um, it just seems like some of the stuff could be a little bit better and I don't know if that's the brand of a uh, of this pop-up or if just all pop-ups are like this. So that'd be interesting to find out. All right, so we finished our uh, camping excursion here. Uh, pretty uneventful. Camper worked pretty well. Everything uh, seemed to work as planned. The one unplanned thing was this stump over here. The first night I was playing catch with my daughter and I tapped that stump with my foot and found out that there was like a wasp or hornet's nest in there and I got stung four times once in the lip so that was pretty painful so lesson learned there but other than that uh, everything with the camper seemed to uh, work all right it would have been nice to have the battery to use the lights and stuff and we had a couple people come look at it and they say they really really kind of like it so and ask us what we thought of it and I'm like yeah it seems all right and there was another uh, camper that came in with a Flagstaff Mac and MAC so yeah we got everything loaded up and uh, we're gonna take off and head for home so that'll be it for now